Dear friends, dear Foreign Minister of Norway, dear ministers, uh, dear friend Zaid al Hussein, uh, a great leader of uh, the United Nations human rights system. Four, re four facts I submit to you about the death penalty today and where it's going, and six reasons why the European Union is so actively engaged, uh, both uh, domestically and internationally, in the United Nations uh, in a few months with a resolution to abolish it. Fact number one, the momentum has changed. Today, it is not to ask a country why it is that they have abolished the death penalty, as might have been the case a few decades back. Today, the question to ask someone is, why haven't you? Eight countries in 1945, 78, 30 years later, 16 only, 100% increase, but very little. 2015, over 150. Eight, 16, 150. The question is not, why have you abolished? The question is, why haven't you? Second fact, this is not a regional, it's not a cultural, it's not a religious, it's not a political debate. Every European Union country, of course, has abolished the death penalty, but every country in the Council of Europe has abolished the death penalty as well. Russia and Germany, Azerbaijan and the UK abolished. Morocco, South Africa, Cuba abolished. Same goes for those who retain the death penalty. There is no thread, cultural, political, or religious, to connect them. The majority of states in the United States and Iran still kill. So this is not a debate East versus West, North versus South. Third fact, everyone who has abolished the death penalty, every country faces very, very serious crime. The terrorist attacks in France, in Brussels, were shocking, fundamentally intended to shock the values of the European Union and of those countries. No one dreamt of saying, oh, the way to avoid those attacks in the future is to bring back the death penalty. In Norway, in Norway, as others mentioned, of course, Breivik killed, and he tried to undermine the whole country. And he failed because the government, so inspiringly to the rest of us, said, I'm going to fight this through human rights and fundamental rights. So, in other words, fact number three, it is not that countries who retain the death penalty have real serious crime problems, whereas the others don't. And certainly, if you accept that fact, then it's a little difficult to argue that those who have abolished the death penalty are what? Crime lovers? Naive? the like murderers to be in the streets. Obviously, that number that went from 8 to 16 to over 150 knows how to fight crime as well. And they do not use the death penalty to do it. Fact number four, public opinions, indeed, in many countries, are in favor of the death penalty at the time that the death penalty is being abolished. And fact as well, Public opinions in every country that abolishes the death penalty very shortly after the penalty is abolished support the abolition. So public opinions change. In France, when Mitterrand came and said, I will abolish the death penalty, as the foreign minister said, Panis opinion was against abolishing. A little later, it is among the leading countries in the world, French citizens, among the leading citizens in the world, saying, we don't want this death penalty back. In Greece, same thing. In 74, my country, after a terrible dictatorship, a court condemns the dictators to death. Karamanlis, at the time, the prime minister said, no, I'm not going to kill them. 
The public opinion went, what are you talking about? These people in the cradle of democracy in the world killed democracy. We have to kill them. A few months later, everyone was proud that we hadn't killed them because that indicated our humanity. Six reasons, very quickly, why the EU wants to abolish. Number one, it's international law. It's international law. Cruel and unusual punishment is illegal under international law. And right to life is a fundamental human right. Number two, those international legal principles stem from a fundamental international legal concept, the dignity of every human being. Now, I know some people say, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? The murderer, the person who raped a little kid, what dignity do they have left? Haven't they given away their dignity by committing those crimes? Now, I know I can answer to those people and explain human dignity under international law, but they will not listen, and I understand that. So I ask them to listen to this. Forget for a second the dignity of the killer. Think about your own dignity. Think about your own dignity. I refuse to kill a killer because I refuse to make him or her turn me into a killer. It is my human dignity that I'm defending. I will not bloody my hands because they did. Third reason why the EU supports the abolition of the death penalty. Because, in fact, it does not deter. I won't get into details. Many speakers have spoken about this before. Hundreds of studies prove it. It doesn't deter. Fourth reason why we support the abolition of the death penalty. Civilized nations don't simply want to ensure that they punish the guilty. They also feel an obligation to ensure that they do not punish the innocent. And indeed, the death penalty has, in hundreds of cases, been proven to be imposed on innocent people. This happens even in the best legal systems, even in the most thorough ones, such as in the United States. Hundreds of cases. Imagine in places where the legal systems have collapsed, in cases where hatred and political division almost pushes people to make decisions not based on the law, but based on the anger. That's the fourth reason. Fifth reason, the death penalty discriminates against minorities, against the poor, against blacks. Sixth and final reason. We have all witnessed in the past few years death penalty live. We have seen people cut people's heads off and hold them in front of YouTube. They have decided that that person has to die, and they killed them. And they try to shock us into submission, shock us into assuming that that kind of barbarity is OK, shock us into assuming that hatred is OK. It's not. When ISIS commits those murders, it is the civilized communities, every human being's, every nation's obligation to say, I will not allow you because I see what your understanding of the death penalty is. I want to allow you and your values to take hold over the values of humanity. A way that uh, we can respond to that kind of extreme violence is to join hands and to say, we're not going to do it. We're not going to get into the boat you're trying to put us in. We will resist. An eye for an eye. Someone said, I don't remember who, but I love the quote, if we just go with an eye for an eye, at the end of the day, we will all be blind. I don't want us to be. Thank you very much.